Maharishi, do all the teachers of transcendental meditation teach the same technique? Uh, uh, yeah, the teaching has been uh, set up in a very, very standard form. Uh, what we do is uh, actual, actual practice involves thinking of a word, a word devoid of meaning. We don't know the meaning, we don't try to know the meaning. And the principle is that if we know the meaning, then meaning is a static thing. If we say pencil, pencil, someone who doesn't know what pencil means in English, he just hears the sound pencil. And someone who knows the pencil, he, he, the meaning is static. The uh, sound uh, changes in its pitch. It could be loud sound, it could be low sound, low sound. So, and the meaning is the same at every pitch, high or low. So, if the mind is on the meaning, then there is no chance of refining the meaning. If the mind is not on the meaning, then there is a chance of refining the sound. Then there is a chance of experiencing the, uh, the sound in its finer values, till the finest could be transcended and the awareness would reach that inner wakefulness devoid of any perception. This will be transcendental consciousness. So we take a thought and experience it. And in experiencing the thought, the simple formula is that the thought functions as an impulse, as, as a uh, motivation for impulse, like that, like that. Then the mind is pulsating. If we don't try to manipulate the thought in any sense, concentrate or hold it on or anything, then the thought will start to, to be refined, 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 it will sink out. As if the activity starts to die out, die out, die out, die out. Just, so, this is what we say, naturally, greater activity of the mind reaches its least value, in a very, very natural way. Any activity has a tendency to settle down and be quiet. So this natural tendency of the mind to be quiet is all that we use in meditation and nothing else. So in a very innocent manner we think of the thought and every time we think it becomes finer and finer and finer, we experience its finer states and then it dies out. The mind is left wide awake by itself without any sound to experience. That inner wakefulness is that unbounded awareness, no boundaries. It's like the wave settling down, and it settles down, and it's flat surface of the water throughout the whole range of the lake. This unbounded awareness, where, where the perception is no longer within boundaries, it is unbounded. This is a silent state of the mind, and it is so fulfilling that the physiology, having tasted this kind of uh, uh, quietness of activity, it cherishes that. And, and because it's cherishing to the whole physiology, to the whole experience, a physiology tends to maintain that state naturally, even when there, there are activities like that, like that, like that. So, by nature, that ex state is experienced. By nature, through practice, it becomes stabilized in the field of activity. And once that is stabilized in the field of activity, we have uh, life on all levels, all possibilities, on the level of all possibilities, perfect orderliness, and all that we know from quantum mechanics to be the characteristic of a vacuum state is experience, becomes one's own personal experience throughout life. And that kind of life we want to generate. But uh, one has to have a teacher, it, one a cannot teacher, just by reading. Teacher. No, by reading it's very difficult. Because uh, to have that effortless thinking, one needs a little verification from the teacher a few times, two, three, four times, and then one knows what it means to have a thought without effort. Just that experience. And then uh, in, the, in the process of teaching, in the procedure of teaching, we have laid out three days of checking. 
that one experiences and then the next day the teacher uh, tells him certain things which by experience of years of teaching we have established that these are the points which the beginner must know the first day. Now the second day experience is these are the points which the beginner must know as an explanation of his two days experience. Experiences are very subtle. In this case the experiences are fading of the experiences. <laughs> There's something we experience, we think the thought, it's a direct experience of a thought. And then it begins to fade and fade and fade and fade and fade. So, the uh, disappearing of the experiences, first day, second day, third day, every day it becomes a little clearer what this means, a little bit clearer. In three days, the experiences become fairly clear to be able to understand the entire process and on that basis all the future possibilities. <coughs> so, three days of the checking is a, is a vital aspect of the of the beginning of the process. The whole thing is very simple, there's nothing, nothing uh, of any complication or anything, absolute natural process. That is the reason why uh, everyone succeeds in it. Only those three days checking, you want, uh, one has understood those points, no problem. One more last question, yes? but there's no relationship between the thought and teacher, in other words, there's no relationship of a type of a guru and chela relationship. It's just like the history professor. <laughs> <laughs> he, he counts the sequences of the years, this happened that year, this happened. It's like a teacher, purely on an instructional basis. Otherwise, the, the whole complication is not very scientific. <laughs> <laughs>